peeps. How we doing today? How's everyone feeling? Happy whatever day of the week it is for you. I thought we could spend today talking a little bit more about content marketing, what that is, what that means, how it can benefit you if you are an author, entrepreneur, a little bit of both, that's cool too. And I do want to start gradually introducing a little bit more content around marketing, digital marketing, how that leans into your brand and beyond, because I think that is such an unknown question uh, and a very common challenge for a lot of authorpreneurs, whether you're one or the other or both. I think that this is something that a lot of people can benefit from. So with that all being said, I think it's only fair to kick off with my definition of what I define content marketing is for myself. I define content marketing as creating and distributing valuable content, whether physical or digital, for a very specific audience. This could be your target readership, your, ta your target clientele, whatever the case may be, with the goal of piquing their interest or curiosity enough that they'll check out the other stuff that your brand has going on, whether that's a product or a service. So for example, on my channel, I make a lot of videos. I, I enjoy making videos. I enjoy talking with people and educating them on the things that they don't know about either books or marketing or both. But part of what I also have in place too is that if someone likes it enough, I wanna have other stuff going on to kind of keep the waters warm and let them know that like, yes, this is the person, the brand or the service that you've been looking for all this time. If you like what you see, get in contact with me and maybe we can work together. Or, you know, I'd like for you to go buy my book or whatever your ultimate call to action is. And there are so many benefits to doing content marketing. And just a few of the ones that I have written down is that you're gonna build your brand identity and awareness, which can be especially great for you if you're just starting out as an author or entrepreneur or both. If you are a small business and you wanna get more eyes and ears on you, it's just a really great way to show the folks what you do, kind of what it is that you like to talk about, the stuff that you offer, the value that, you're, that you create with them. Them. It can help increase your SEO, which is search engine optimization. And that's really great if you want someone to be able to go on to Google, type in your name or your business or your book and have only your stuff pop up. That's really great for that kind of thing. Very recently, I found out that if you type in my name, my website's the first one to hit number one on Google, at least for me. So that's very cool. And ultimately it helps people, potential customers, community members, wherever you want these people to be, readers, it helps them to better like, know, and trust you so that when you do have something later on that you want to offer, that you want to launch, that you want to bring more awareness to, if it's a community, whatever, they already know you, like you, and appreciate you enough, and the stuff that you've already been giving them content-wise, because it's valuable, they feel a little bit better about leaning into that new thing, whatever it is that you're launching or introducing. And I've been creating content for my own growing brand for about the last two or three years, and I just now feel like I'm kind of starting to get a handle on things, if I'm being totally honest. So based on the countless hours that I've spent building up my own brand, I feel like there are three main types of content that I'm going to be organizing into three main categories, and then I'm going to be breaking them down each from there. The first is audio, the second is visual, the third is text, and I'm even going to say that there's like a hidden fourth, which is that there can be mixed content. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in the next few minutes can be considered both audio and visual. A webinar or like a video podcast might match that category. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the first one, which is audio and the different types of audio. If you're someone who doesn't like to show your face around, if you don't like the way that you look on camera, audio channels or forms of content are a really great way to sort of build up your authority get more eyes and ears on you as a brand or your content, your products or your services. And some of the most popular ones that I managed to grab were podcasts, whether starting one as a host or guesting on one. You have audiobooks for those of you who are authors out there or aspiring authors. And then there's also audio live streaming. And the best example that I could find for this is maybe Clubhouse. If you're an entrepreneur, you've probably seen this floating around. Even if you're an author, it's just, it's like a podcast that you can contribute to in real time, if that makes any sense. That's how I think about it. I would love to do more audio stuff uh, because it's a lot of work to get ready to put my face on the camera. I got do my hair, I gotta do my makeup, I gotta like pick out the right clothes and all that stuff. I would like to be able to just rot in my sweatshirt and greasy messy bun and just like let it all fly out on a microphone somewhere. I think that would be really fun. So maybe one day I'll get to that point. But right now I'm a visual person, which brings me pretty smoothly, I might add, into my second point, which is visual content. There are videos. 
Most obviously, you are watching a video right now. There's both long form and short form content. One can kind of lead into another. If you primarily do a lot of short form content, like TikToks, for example, those can lead into longer form videos that you can kind of stretch out, maybe on a YouTube channel or something like that. And vice versa, if you make long form content for YouTube or something, or you do live streams or whatever, you can always kind of clip the bits and pieces or the biggest takeaways or the best moments of it to distribute across platforms like TikTok. There's also live streams, like I mentioned, there's also webinars. There are even visual ads that can be placed on platforms like TikTok or maybe even like Google Sh or uh, Google Google Shorts, YouTube Shorts. I do personally think that visual components in general are a really great way to capture people's attention because I feel like being in such a digital age and being in such a scrolling type of attention economy, I guess, whatever visually catches people's attention, whether it's a caption, whether it's a snapshot of something, whether it's like an arrow pointing at something, I think it's just gonna naturally pique people's curiosities, which is kind of the big thing that you want. You want to pique people's curiosity anytime you're making content, especially if they're cold, meaning that they don't know you, you don't know them, you just, they happen to find your stuff, they don't know you from Adam, but they're now interested in what you have to say or what you have to show them or teach them or entertain them on. Webinars and live streams are really great for that kind of thing too. If you're someone with a lot of content, if you want to teach something, if you want to get live conversations going, I think webinars and live streams are a really great way to do that. And if you are an author, if you're launching a book for the first time, if you've previously launched books and you want to write some more, a lot of uh, authors that I've worked with have done live streams as a way to celebrate on their launch day. They've been 30 minutes to two hours. It's been by themselves. It's been with a few guests or a handful of guests. You can go a lot of different directions with something like that. A lot of algorithms on platforms like Facebook, like YouTube, whatever, they really like live streams. People don't always tune into it live, which I think can kind of catch people off guard if they're new to it and they try it for the first time, but it does kind of help snowball over time, right? So you might, you know, go live and only two people are tuned in, but maybe a week goes by and by the end you have a hundred people that have tuned in. I've got a couple live streams on my channel. Um, I kind of played around with it for a little bit and you know the views are higher now than they were when I was first streaming. And thirdly we have text and this is what I think most people are familiar with. If you are one of like the OG social media users you like grew up around Facebook especially Facebook was like the hot new thing on the block uh, when I was growing up so it was a lot of status updates and then there was Twitter and then you know you have Instagram and you're captioning everything everything. So I feel like the written word was like one of the most original forms of social media before like all these visual components came out. So if you're someone who again prefers to kind of stay off screen or you like to use text to supplement other types of content, this can look like blogging. This can look like newsletters. This can look like reviews or testimonials or success stories or case studies. If you are an author wanting to get more reviews or if you're a business owner wanting to get more attention, this can be ads like Google ads. Those are very text heavy. Social media posts, press releases, infographics and slide decks. These are examples of types of content that is very text heavy, but have a lot of visual components to supplement it as well. So an example for me that I used is I was on Substack for about a solid year. I was kind of playing around with it. I feel like a lot of content in general is just playing around with it and kind of being open and vulnerable to something new and being okay with being new and a beginner at something. And as I was playing around on Substack, I would write out these blogs and then the videos, the YouTube videos that I would make, I would tap that on so that when it was published, people could read about it or people could watch it and both kind of led to the other. I would drop the blog URL in my videos and I would drop the video, you know, URL, the video itself into my blogs and it all just kind of, it all kind of led into the other. You can do the same thing with newsletters. If you've got a lot of stuff that you want to promote or give more attention to, or if you want to highlight certain things, throw all kinds of URLs and memes and blogs and photos and, or whatever in, into a URL. I think that's a really great way to let people know what you're doing, updates that you have, announcements that you have, and other forms of content that people might have missed out on when they were first published. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do here. You can use a lot of these things to entertain. You can lot use a lot of these things to educate. You can use all these things to edutain. You can kind of do whatever you want as long as you are, as long as you're clear on who your target audience is, where they get their content, and almost like how they might expect to absorb that content, if that makes any sense. You're almost kind of like speaking, you're, you're speaking their language, basically. You wanna know who they are, where they're at, 
and the kind of stuff that they want to hear. Now, some tips that I have for all this stuff, because this was a lot of information, it's very high level. This is very 30,000 foot view. This is for, you know, folks who want to know a little bit more about what's out there, what they can do, options for them, and to kind of help ground everything that I've said just a little bit more, I've got a few tips that I want to share. So the first one is that because you are a brand and we are professionals, it might not be a bad idea, especially if you're starting out and you want to get focused on your niche, is using a content pillar model, which is used to create a thematic theme work of related groups of content. And I had to like look down at my notes because I really wanted to get that description right. Um, and I'll show you an example of mine. I'll pop it up here on the screen, but it's almost like you've got this umbrella niche and off of that umbrella are these almost like little subtopics. And those are specific talking points or ideas or themes that you can use to get specific, you know, ideas for content from your blog topic, your newsletter topic, your video topic, right? That's just kind of an example of visually what it looks like if you're someone who, you know, likes to hear the definition and also see an example of it as well. I'm one of those people. Tip number two is that if you're a busy professional or you just don't have a lot of time to give to something like this, it might not be a bad idea to batch record. This is something I wish I was a little bit better at. Once a quarter, once a month, once every two weeks, whatever cadence is most comfortable for you. Maybe you sit down and spend a day or a few hours just getting really organized and caught up on all forms of content, at least mapping stuff out your, you're just thinking ahead and mapping things out, right? So I will show you a quick example of my new setup. I literally set this up last night. So when I say it's new, it is brand spanking new. Okay, you're gonna see my big old microphone here in the middle of the screen, but this is kind of what it looks like. Ignore that other stuff onto the side. This is a very new kind of form of organizing my content that I'm sort of playing around with. So I did use ChatGPT for this to give me inspiration. I basically threw everything into ChatGPT, what my brand was, what I did, what my goals were, what I'm currently doing, you know, current efforts that I'm doing. And it spit out this whole content marketing plan. And I like using stuff in Trello. Um, my husband turned me on to that. And week one, which is, the week now when I'm recording, this is the first week of July. This is kind of what I have. And this is the stuff that ChatGPT told me to do that I agreed with and that I feel like I can use as a starting point. So I kind of included this as a checklist because I'm a checklist person. I like having stuff to kind of check off. And then for this video, the actual script that I'm, that I'm using at this moment is all kind of listed right here. I used to kind of take this and throw it into a Google Doc, but um, I think I kind of like every, everything all you know, being all grouped together in this one. So you can see right here, I am, I am, where am I? I'm right here, or I was right there. Tips, batch record, batch prepare, record, if, whatever I'm saying, if possible. In a perfect world, I don't think I personally for my own brand would go more than batching, you know, once a month maybe, because I do want to stay up to date on trends, on, you know, trending topics, on things in the news that I can maybe capitalize on, because I want to have a blend of evergreen content, but also more pressing and more time sensitive content to kind of help with views and with engagement and getting more clicks and stuff. The other tip that I have too, the third and final tip that I have is that if you're someone with, you know, a lot of different platforms going on, you know, you might want to consider using like a management tool like Hootsuite or Buffer. The only thing that I will say is that I did try out Buffer and I didn't have any problems with it, but sometimes you'll see like on a Facebook post or something, for example, if you scheduled it through Buffer, it'll have a tiny little grayed out little note that'll say like published with Buffer or, you know, posted through Buffer. And I'm sure there is some kind of premium membership you can pay to get rid of that. You know, that's something that you might want to consider if you have kind of like a hard set brand that you're going with, or maybe if you're kind of starting out and it doesn't really bother you that much. So with that all being said, that was a lot of information and I hope you found it useful so far. I did wanna offer a few takeaways to kind of help ground everything, just sort of cement this conversation that we've had today. Don't feel like you need to be everywhere all at once, especially if you're starting out, if you're starting to think ahead about, you know, where do I need to be? What kind of stuff should I do? And you're using this video as more of like a starting point to see what your options are. Please don't feel, despite common pressure, that you need to be everywhere all at once. Remember, think about who are you trying to target? What audience, what readership, what clientele, what whatever are you trying to attract? Where are they? 
What kind of stuff do they want to hear? That might mean that you focus on one platform based on that information. That might mean that you focus on three or four different ones. It needs to be manageable enough for you if you're doing it yourself and you're a one-man band like your homegirl here, whether you have like a creative marketing assistant or a VA, a virtual assistant, or you hire someone on your team for that kind of thing. Just something to kind of keep in mind. But if you feel pressured to be everywhere all at once, you don't have to be. Just I, I personally think less is more. And for me, that looks like going really deep on maybe one or two different platforms. YouTube is my primary one right now and I should play around with LinkedIn because that's also where another one of my audiences are, but that's just my take, so that's one. The other one is kind of one that I mentioned throughout this video, which is that be open and be okay and be vulnerable with trying something new, especially if you are starting from scratch, if you're an author, if you're a writer and a poet, an artist wanting to kind of slowly build up your brand a little bit and build a community or increase your visibility or engagement or you know bring more awareness to your brand, lean into that uncomfortable feeling, try some something new and see how it goes. And then thirdly, which is probably the most important piece of advice I can offer is that consistency is king. Consistency is going to be the thing that makes it work for you. For any algorithm, especially long form content, they want to see that you are showing up consistently that this isn't like a phase, you're committed to it, you wanna see growth, you're planting seeds, right? You're planting seeds. You wanna keep watering it and taking care of it and fertilizing it enough as often as you can so that by the time you look out your window one day, you're gonna see a field full of crops. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was enlightening. I hope it maybe validated some of your hesitations and answered some of your questions. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment with your thoughts if you want. I really try my best to respond to every single comment that I get. Take care until I see you in the next video. Bye.